Welcome back, this is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Death Mode playthrough episode. We are playing the Rogue class and it has been a ton of fun so far. Last episode we defeated several bosses like the Eye of Cthulhu, Krabuan, and the King Slime. And if you've noticed already, I've done a ton of changes to the base between episodes. I changed the stone out for Ash and Hellstone and I think it looks really cool. And I turned off the Hell music box, and I've got the Brimstone music box up here. And that's the biome music from Calamity. And I think it sounds pretty cool. A couple people had suggested that we switch it to that. And then I also changed the way the ground looks down here as well. I've added Ash and Hellstone and some lava backgrounds and then a little bridge here, and I think it looks way cooler. It definitely has more of a hell ambiance to it, which I really like. And that was pretty much the only thing I did in between episodes, other than re-rolling a few of my items. I got Unreal on two of our weapons, and then I wasn't able to get many good modifiers on our accessories, but for the most part, they're damage or defense. So that's pretty good, but we have a lot of work to do there, but we're kind of out of gold right now. So one thing I want to do today is head on over to the Sulfurous Sea and hopefully we can get through this biome in time before we freeze. Um, if you notice, we actually have a new song playing in the background. And this is the biome music from the Extra Calamity Mod music. There's going to be different music that you'll notice throughout this playthrough because in between episodes I installed Extra Calamity music. Most of the Calamity Mod weapons have auto swing, but for the ones that don't, it was pretty helpful to install the Omni Swing mod. And what that basically does, it is allows all of my weapons to auto swing, which is just so nice. It's a big quality of life. Ooh, we have a Hive Cyst. Um, I think I'm gonna skip it for now. It'd be nice if we had our Sulfurous Sea armor because I know that's gonna be really helpful. It really looks like this Shroomerang is quite powerful. And by the way, this is the first time we've gone this far to the left in our world. So it's pretty cool to see what we're finding over here. Oh yeah, we found a meteor biome. This means we can get the meteor fist item that people have been asking about. And meteor is part of the vein miner, so I think we'll be able to completely destroy this in one click. Oh yeah. That is so satisfying. <laughs> The whole thing. <laughs> so much meteorite. Whoa, these guys do a lot of damage. Ooh, there's a new song for this too. I actually really like this song. I kind of don't want to destroy the meteor now. The song's so cool. Whoa. Okay, we're almost dead. We gotta be careful. <laughs> With all this lightning and all these enemies. We're picking up seeds. I guess we got the blowpipe. Okay, we got our healing going again. So let's finish off this. Well, we just died there. I guess we were on fire. Well, we did get all the meteorite we needed, and I needed to go back to base anyways so we could put away some of our stuff. And one thing I may do is just take all of our loot, and we can just put it all into magic storage now, because there's no need to have a separate storage thing right here. And now we can craft some meteorite. That should be good. And now we can craft the Meteor Fist. I'm still kind of figuring out this new interface, but you can grab the item from the bottom part right here, which is nice to know. And now we have the Hasty Meteor Fist. And this is pretty sweet. This definitely reminds me of the Nebula spell you can get. And now back to exploring. We'll see what we can find on this side of the map. During the Sulfur Sea event, it is crazy how much lightning there is. You can hardly move, you gotta just constantly be watching out for lightning. Oh sweet, we found the dungeon. 
Well, let's go in and grab some of these pots. I guess the old man's pretty cool and has a rooftop pool, although we shouldn't be swimming while there's lightning. So let's head on over to the Sulphurous Sea. Okay, here we are. It is the Sulphurous Sea now. They've completely revamped it, which I think is really awesome. Man, this is pretty treacherous. <laughs> so much lightning, so many mobs, and they're pretty aggressive mobs here. Wow, that fish is going nuts. Well, we're getting sulfuric scales, and I'm just playing it safe and slowly building a little path across here. Oh, we got the crazy fish again. Okay, well, we've built a path over to the first sulfurous island, and I just realized I forgot an ax. <laughs> Okay, well, we are back to the Sulphurous Sea, and we've got our ham axe now. I just went ahead and crafted a meteor one. And let's start cutting down some trees. Hopefully these trees will give us quite a bit. Uh, 10 acid wood. Uh-oh. That was a bad idea. I was expecting the islands to be closer together. I guess we'll take out some of these eels, put down some light. This is so cool that there's little islands. Okay, well, I guess we gotta go swimming. Uh-oh, we got like a piranha or something on us. Or a leech or something. Okay, let's go down and see if we can grab some of the items. Wow, this is so much damage. I need to figure out how to do this biome a little bit better. I'm used to the old sulfurous sea. Well, it's nice we're getting some good potions and stuff here. Okay, well, at least we're taking out the enemies pretty quickly. And hopefully we can kill some of these crazy fish. Because those are the ones that were doing the most damage to me, I think. Okay, let's head down and try to kill some crazy fish. It's really good that we have Victide, because that helps us so much underwater. Okay, let's try to open this chest. It looks like it's requiring like some sort of special key or something. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to open that right now. I forgot about our Meteor Fist. This is a pretty cool weapon. It's affected by gravity, which is interesting. It's, it's kind of like shooting a bow. Well, it looks like the Sulphur Sea event just finished, which is probably good because we need to have some time to actually pick up all the items. So they're going to be all on the ocean floor here. Whoa, what is that? I need to get out of the water. Okay, we almost died there. <laughs> I guess it's better to go back to base instead of dying. So I think we might be able to plant some more trees in the biome and then get some more of that wood. So I'm going to head back over. So here's two trees. I think those are far enough apart. It should be fine. And now let's go ahead and just build a bridge across this area. I think that will be quite helpful. Uh oh, we got an alligator. Or a crocodile or whatever this is. Whoa, and it had the angler. Nice. So I guess the angler can be eaten by the alligators. So if you see an alligator at the surface, you may want to kill it. And it looks like the angler just died, unfortunately. He probably died in the acid water. We had just enough acorns. So we'll just plant the last one over here. And then we can just wait a while, come back. Let's go see if any of them have already grown. I don't know how long it takes. Hopefully it will go pretty quickly. This would be kind of a cool place to build a base. I'm not going to do it this playthrough, but it could be a pretty interesting thing to build bases across these sulfurous um, islands and stuff. Oh, sweet. We have a tree already. Excellent. And that was a big one. Let's see if we can pick up some loot that we may have missed. Ooh, a catfish. Oh, I didn't mean to just run into it like that. 
And we probably should put this on. Although the acid's hurting us more than breath loss. Ooh, we did get a gravitation potion though. That's really awesome. We should definitely use that and get some cloud and stuff because we can craft a few cool things with clouds. Whoa, this is so cool. These glowing vines and everything down here. This is really awesome. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna teleport back to base. I think what I'll do next is put away some of this stuff and then head down to the underworld and we can start farming up the underworld enemies because we can actually get a pretty powerful throwing weapon down there. Well, we made it to the underworld and right away, there's a the hellforge right there. Oops, and a geyser. Oh, I forgot to get fire resistance on, but we did get our hellforge. So let's put that down. I got two, so we could put one in here as well. Another thing I was thinking about doing is going into space and using our uh, gravitation potion. But what we'll need to do is get a hand warmer and this will provide us cold immunity. So if we didn't have these hand warmers on, we'd be freezing right now. So we've got this big planetoid right there. But what I'm looking for are some of the other planetoids or the sky islands probably are more useful. Well, we did find a sky island right here, so let's blow it up and grab some of these clouds for sure. Very handy. Um, in fact, let's blow up a few more. And we'll just make a big waterfall. In fact, we can get back up into the sky. Now this feels like Minecraft swimming up a big pile of water. <laughs> Okay, we got a balloon. Excellent. And now let's break this. And I think we're going to die in just a second unless we have some sort of resistance. Maybe we've got some fire resistance. I'm not aware of any, but we're not dying just yet. Or maybe we're low enough in the sky, because I think it's only after you get to a certain point in the sky. Yeah, right there is where you start taking damage. So we can keep exploring at this height. And we're actually getting pretty close to our sulfurous sea biome. We got another tree. Excellent. So we'll go replant that. I think we're probably getting pretty close to being able to craft this armor set. <laughs> and the tree grew right as we were heading back to base. Um, but I don't think we need it anyways. There's actually a few things I was looking at. We can actually craft a rusty lockpick, which will open those chests underwater. Let's craft some sulfur skin potions as well. And we can also craft the contaminated bile. And that's a good rogue weapon. There we go. And this will start the acid rain event. So we can basically farm this up until we get everything we need. We need some of the sand from the sulfur sea. And then we also need to find where the urchins spawn and kill a few of those. And then we'll be able to get our armor. So let's see if we can go down and open up these chests. Interesting. So it's an item that causes most ranged weapons to sometimes release acid droplets from the sky. Yes, we got an urchin. Excellent. So now we just need to kill a few more of them and we'll have plenty of stingers. Okay, let's try this new weapon out. I don't know, this this uh, doesn't really do much damage. I might be missing something about how this works, but our boomerang's doing much better damage. Whoa, we have the Aquatic Scourge. It just spawned under us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so cool. We gotta be really careful. I don't wanna wake up the Aquatic Scourge. Okay, so what we need to do is break through the top layer and then we can get down to the sulfuric sand. I'm kind of worried we're accidentally gonna bomb the Aquatic Scourge, but I think we got what we needed. We've got 143 sand now, and that looks like plenty. So now we just need to get some sulfuric scales. 
Well, we bombed a hole through this area right here. So let's go see what's down here. This is pretty cool. We got another chest. I think I'm gonna have to go back to base anyways, so we might as well just explore this area. Man, this is so cool how there's like caverns and everything. Uh-oh, we just woke up the aquatic scourge. <laughs> oh no, that was scary. Well, we needed to despawn them anyways. What I think I'm gonna do is just farm up this event right in this spot right here because then all of the enemies will drop their scales on ground below us instead of falling into the abyss. Because I think some of our scales fell into the abyss last time. Well, we just finished the event, and now we just got to pick up all of the rest of the sulfurous scales, and I think we got a whole bunch that time. And now, finally, after so much farming, we can craft our armor. Got the helmet, the chest, and the legs. So right now we've got 25 defense, and our shroomerang has 38 rogue damage. So if we put this on... We went up to 31 defense and we went up to 42 rogue damage. So that's pretty powerful. Some of the cool things that this does is it grants underwater breathing. It has an additional jump and it says that the set bonus attacking and being attacked by enemies inflicts poison. Jumping off the ground leaves behind a sulfurous bubble that applies venom on hit. It reduces the severity of the sulfuric waters, reduces breath loss in the abyss. And of course, it's got all the stuff with rogue stealth and all that. One of the things that I forgot is that we can actually craft a lucky horseshoe and that's from gold, cloud, and sun plates. Now that we have our balloon, our cloud bottle, and a horseshoe, we can combine all of those. So let's craft this. I'm still trying to get used to this interface. So another thing I want to do is fight the king slime a few more times because I want to try to get the slime mount because I really like that and it's quite helpful for falling quickly. Ooh, there's a new song for the King Slime. Excellent. And we could do some crazy damage here. I like the new song. Quickly kill all these guys. And no slime mount, so let's kill him again. There we go. On our third King Slime, we got the Slime Saddle. Excellent. So we are in the Corruption Biome because I think we're ready to defeat the Eater of Worlds. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of use some bombs and stuff to expand this arena a little bit. We just need to blow up this orb right here. We ran out of wood platforms, so I hope this is enough, but we've got plenty of space, so I think we should be good. So let's try this boomerang right here. I think this will do well. This song is really awesome, but we're doing not that well against this guy. Oh no. Did I underestimate the Eater of Worlds? Our arena is too tiny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was just complete fail. Let's go ahead and try that again. This time I'm gonna be a little bit more prepared. I'll get some more wood and some more platforms and have a proper arena. Fortunately, this builder NPC actually sells wood blocks. So we don't have to go finding trees and all that. We can just buy a whole bunch.
I think our new arena looks a lot better. I think this is definitely going to be the way to defeat the Eater of Worlds. So let's go ahead and start this fight up and see what we can do. Yeah, it's so much easier to dodge. We can see all of the projectiles, even though I just got hit by two of them. But yeah, this is much better. And we can get those head hits a little bit easier. This boomerang seems to be working pretty well. We'll do a heal. We really need to get some better healing potions. We're using lesser healing potions right now. Okay, well we're doing well now. The head's taking a lot of damage, so we're gonna start splitting it. Hopefully not too much. Oops, we're getting hit by some spores from, I think, the split part of it or something. Yeah, this is going really well. Uh-oh. Okay, we should be able to stall the head for a little bit. And now we're starting to get some hearts from other parts of the boss. Excellent. That's a good part of the fight. Man, this boss song makes this so much more intense. <laughs> We're getting pretty close. Ooh, there's so many hearts over there. Just watch me die trying to get hearts. The irony. The nice thing is if you shoot the little spores that it fires, you can actually destroy them. And so, I just am constantly shooting, and if those spores get pretty close, I can often destroy them and negate the damage that they would do. Oh, so much stuff going on. It's now broken into so many different parts. Okay, we can heal now. Gotta be careful. We're making good progress. The little ones move so quickly. I think the Luxor's Gift is actually helping us a lot during this fight because all these little scorpions that are flying around are doing some damage. Okay, we've just got a few parts left. Oh, actually, that was just the last part. Yes, we got it. We've defeated the Eater of Worlds. A surprisingly hard boss, but then again, I'm finding myself saying that with all the bosses in death mode. We got our Worm Scarf, of course. We have the Eater of Worlds lore, which has deadly microbes spawn when this is in your inventory, but you have less life regen. And then we have the Corruption which places in your inventory to prevent hive cysts from spawning. And now let's go ahead and craft our nightmare pickaxe. Excellent. Well, I hope y'all have enjoyed this episode. It's been fun farming up all sorts of stuff in the sulfurous sea and getting our sulfurous armor. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.